Turbocharged cars are very sensitive to heat and heat soak and when they get hot, as you know, they get really slow and sluggish, but there's a good upgrade to help avoid that, slow that process down of heat soak and make your car more consistently quicker across the board, the whole power band. We're gonna do that upgrade today. Let's get a quick pull in, let you hear this RS rip and we'll get into the process. Today's a fun one, it's pretty simple. And if you're all about building confidence in the garage like I am, having fun working on your car, today's a good episode for you. Let's do this pull, get that little fix, that itch, and let's get to wrenching. Got her in sport mode, going on my AWE button, clicking on. I was in quiet mode, now I'm in loud mode. Oops, I'm gonna get rid of the pops and bangs soon, but. good upgrade for this car. It's gonna get our charge air temperatures down. So once the turbocharger compresses the air, creates boost, it goes through this front mount intercooler, gets cooled down by the ambient air temperature. Since this is a larger core, flows better. It's gonna cool a larger volume of air faster. Therefore, that air going into your engine is colder and has a ton of volume there for you. So therefore, your car is gonna drive a little quicker and it's a good time and it's a great upgrade for any EcoBoost platform. What can be alarming about a front mount intercooler is how much added weight there can be at times, but that added weight gets you so much extra power across the whole spectrum because on a hotter day, you need all the intercooler you can get. Colder nights, not as necessary, but it flows better. Across the board, you're getting more power, so you're gonna move the car quicker across the ground even though you're adding weight, which is rare. Time to install on jack stands front only. We're doing this on the ground because you most likely are at home. We're not using the lift outside. So what Karma Speed's all about, helping you build confidence in the garage. Time to pop the hood and pull the headlights out. Let's take the headlights out. I wanna get my T30. I need a 3 8 to quarter adapter. Favorite tool, a little bucket. You almost just don't want to believe how easy this is to get out for a headlight. Figure out what the situation on the plug is. This tab right here doesn't seem like you would do anything by pushing on it. But if you push it down, and I have this little O-ring seal remover tool. And I just kind of wedge it in here and very softly push this off of here. Now we're free. You can take the headlight out with no damages. When I tell you, like, I'm serious. I'm so serious. These being one of the best tools and investments in myself I've ever made. O-ring seal removers, put it in the description. It's not used for anything in my toolbox, but electrical clips. I've used it maybe once on an oil seal to transfer it on a Volkswagen from one, not gonna go there. For electronics and door panels, I'm pausing the episode just to rant about it. Pull out your wallet and order them. <laughs> they have saved me so much time, I got you in the description. Let's get back into it and get the other headlight out. Little pro tip, whenever I remove headlights, there's a really high chance of you scratching the paint anywhere around the outside of the headlight. So I try and just kind of wiggle it and like get it to break loose softly in the right direction so that I don't damage any paint, especially this nitrous blue that's so beautiful. This headlight likes to go forward a little bit and then out and then I can kind of twist it up. Oh, I was able to get that one by hand. Heading under the car. Got some T30 Torx all over the place. We want to remove all the connections that hold the front bumper on. You can just look around, it's pretty obvious. Take them out one at a time. Then on each side of the fender well, pull that off. At this point, I want to pull back the fender liner. 
T30 or higher up in the fender well. Pull it back some. Then we have access to that push pin and we should be able to pull this side off. It didn't break. It's just a standard push pin that holds the bumper to the bumper clip. Kind of shocking. That's free now, so that's good. Let's go do the other side. I was sleeping on that T30 up there. If you attack this with a flathead screwdriver, it'll work, but like if you seriously do not have one of these tools either in your toolbox by now, push pin, puller, I could not imagine living without this. I'll leave that in the description for you too. Literally saved so many of these fasteners just with this tool. And it's not about money with these things. It's just about like destroying the whole thing. We'll usually sometimes wear out whatever else it connects to. You just want to keep everything intact and functional. You don't have to reuse this dried out push pin. I probably will because it works just fine and it's the right fit. I don't really want to dig around for another one. Why would I want to do that? I'll just use this again unless it's loose, which it won't be because I just got it out with my tool and I can just lightly put it back together so I don't mix it up. This only goes one way. That, there you go. Now, freedom. One thing I can do now is release the cable for the hood, which is easier to release right here and higher up on it. Get these push pins out of here. All right, the top one out. Then the bottom one. Second one over here. Right down here, T30, remove that. I just verified there's one on each side of this whole part and they're the same as the headlight. So I'm gonna put it in my organization tray all together. Doesn't matter where they go when they go back in. And these T30. Not positive it's both sides, but down inside here, there's a lighting harness we need to disconnect. Actually disconnects pretty easy. Just push on the tab and pull back. Not a fan of this at all. These tabs you have to lift up because this holds the radiator support, I believe. Or this is the radiator support and you gotta get these tabs over. So I'm gonna do this off camera so you guys can see me pull off the whole bumper, but do not break that. This is so easy to break. You've got it on both sides. It's all about pushing up just enough. Okay, that wants to go, sweet. Now I just gotta do this side. Okay, it's there. Come on, slide there, don't break. Okay, I think we're good. Of course, there's one Torx bolt with the, un with the tray underneath. And just like that, the bumper's off. See, that wasn't so bad, it's easy. Popping back in the toolbox, let's grab the T25. We need to remove the brake ducting with these T25s to make way to get this intercooler out. Another one right up in here. Blue or red? Which one should we pick? Uh, you can't decide, I got this. Blue. Oops. didn't know the intercooler has this big section of it blocked off for the colder states out there I believe so it warms up faster these cars take so long to get to operating temp so that will be a big benefit out here in Arizona getting rid of that having more airflow slide that off there slide that off there underneath there's two bolts one here eight mil I'm gonna take both of them off on the driver's side, I'm gonna pull back on a little bit, and this allows me to get this seven millimeter socket right on that clamp, quarter inch drive ratchet, instead of a flathead. Go ahead and loosen this up. Should be able to grab the back of the hose, the boost tube. It's gonna be kind of corroded on there, so you're gonna have to do some persuasion. I'm gonna go take off the other side before I do anything crazy. This is a tool I have yet to use to get hoses separated. I'm just gonna stick it in here and see what happens. 
Oh, maybe help get some stubborn hoses off. Okay, this is extremely important. Stick your hand behind here, pull off the map sensor wire. You don't want to break that. This thing is going to be stubborn. Maybe this is too tight. I thought I loosened it plenty. Work it off. Come on, baby. Okay, one side off. Pulling down. Make sure it's loose enough, folks. That did make a difference. Should just slide out now. Booyah, this thin boy. Ready for a thick boy. Let's do a thickness test. T-H-I-C-C-C -C -C test. The results are in. She thick. Okay, so now we have a little bit of work to do. Remove this little cover, don't want any debris in here. Little plug. T25, doing this by hand. This is a screw that threads into plastic. We're not reusing that. We're gonna nicely pull this map sensor out. Manifold absolute pressure. How much pressure is built up in the turbo system with the intercooler piping and such, how much boost pressure is built up in there. That's gonna end up in the intake manifold. Based off the pressure reading here, we'll tell the car how much fuel it needs. That's how the tuning works. I'm gonna put this back over here. To hold the map sensor on, I used a bolt from the bottom of the stock one. It actually threads in perfect. Perfect, snug. Now remove these covers. Next up is getting these off. T30, these are interesting. You can see what we're dealing with there. One side came out and then I pushed down with this tool. Again, these things are awesome. There's a little tab up top, and then I move this out. This doesn't come out very easily, but you can finagle it out. Pop over to this side. This one comes out a lot easier on the passenger side. We've made all sorts of room to play. Now what I'm gonna do silicone spray lightly right inside the edge. Won't hurt anything. Not in the pipe, just on the edge and it'll slide in easier. Okay, I'm working with some tabs, so I'm gonna get real comfortable. I'm gonna like slide it up in place. I have to really like tilt it forward. It's so heavy. You have to like hang each side at the same time. I'm not gonna need to go to the gym after this. Inside so nice. How do I tilt it into this one? Baby pry bar. I'm gonna use it to guide it carefully. Come on. Yeah. No. Just go. Slide this on. Easy enough. Hoses are on. There it goes. And that's what you want. Both tabs intact. Everything's on. Beautiful. No boost leaks there. Grab the other side. Zero boost leaks happening over there. Mount for the bottom of the intercooler. Don't over tighten rib nuts like this. Make sure they're snug. Little tug check. Cool, everything moves together. The hard part's done, you folks. Back up inside here, you wanna make sure you get the wire for the map sensor and plug it back in. Super easy, clipped in. Now we're ready to throw the bumper back on and do this faster than we took it off.
let's talk about what you paid for. Front mount intercooler. What do you get for spending the big bucks on a front mount intercooler? It's gonna make your car faster. Yes, I can confirm, but let's understand how. It's a simple concept, so I'm gonna try and keep it simple. Let's talk about a non-turbo engine. The only way to make it make more horsepower is by increasing the ignition timing. If you don't know what ignition timing is, I will leave a link in the description to a video that explains it. If you get too crazy with ignition timing, too much positive ignition timing, you can create knock, blow up your motor, and that's how those things happen. Catastrophic failure. That's when you send a rod out the bottom of your oil pan or your block. So let's talk about turbo cars. Well, can we make it faster with more positive ignition timing? Absolutely. Pair that with some boost pressure. It's gonna go faster. So you can have higher ignition timing. It's gonna get the motor to spin up faster. More aggressively, pair some boost pressure with it. It's gonna go way faster. Then you increase the ignition timing and the boost pressure at the same time. Now you got that kind of gains where like after you get it tuned, you're like, this thing feels wicked fast. That's because you increase the boost pressure and the ignition timing. Now when your car gets heat soaked, when it gets hot, it's going to pull back the ignition timing the computer is and say, hey, we don't wanna knock, we don't wanna take any chance of blowing this thing up, pull back the ignition timing and let's up the boost pressure and to a certain extent, once it gets hot enough, it'll pull back the boost pressure as well. So on a hot summer day when your car feels super sluggish, it's running probably negative, if not just a flat line zero ignition timing. And then it's gonna have two, three, four, five pounds less of boost pressure also, just to avoid knocking. And so it doesn't blow up your engine, which is great, but your car feels faster. Now, how do I combat that? Well, the only way to increase ignition timing and boost pressure is to get colder air into the engine. Well, the front mount intercooler is flowing more air and cooling it down much more efficiently. So it's getting it as close to ambient temperature as possible so that when it's 81 degrees, like it is here in Arizona, you'll see on my access port here in a sec, that the charged air temperature, the air that's in the turbo system that's about to enter your intake manifold is close to ambient temperature. And I'm just cruising around the streets. Now when we pick up some more speed, we have more air flowing through it. It'll probably go right to ambient temperature, if not dip below a little bit. And now we have the most coldest dense air that we can get this time of year. If I had my stock from my intercooler, it would be warmer. Therefore, less ignition timing and boost pressure possibly. So all it is is just getting rid of a restriction point and increasing flow and reducing temperatures, which is the most important things on a turbocharged engine like this to make more power so that when you put your foot down, you get more smiles per gallon and you have a more consistent amount of power from the car because it's getting a consistent amount of cold air. Front mount intercooler explanation over. Let me show you those temperatures on the access port. 81 degrees outside, 116 degree charge air temp. So the air flowing through the front mount intercooler right now is 116 degrees. Let's fix that. The only way to fix that is by making some air go through the intercooler. So to do that, we gotta drive the car. Now that we're getting going, it's just gonna start dropping. Now the goal is to get this as close to 81 degrees as possible. Picking up speed. It's down to 85, 81 outside. But now that I'm slowing down, it's heating back up. For cruising around town, a couple degrees over ambient is really, really good. Now when I go start having some fun in the canyons with some more spirited driving, gonna have some more airflow, gonna catch some more speed in some areas, gonna get some boost pressure a little bit higher more often, pushing more air through there, and it will probably drop even closer to ambient temperature, if not dip below on certain times of day. Once it gets cold enough, it'll just hover around ambient and not even flinch. And then that's when your car is running optimally, and with the front mount intercooler like this, it will run optimally all across the power band, all across the board, and you'll feel a new heightened level of consistent power from your car, and you'll be like, yeah, this is worth it. If you like the Focus RS upgrades, this is a big one. Check out this one right here. It's a minimal one, but it makes a big difference in how the car looks. We do a test of the ZL1 Rock Guards versus Rally Armor, and you get to see which ones I put on the car and why.